To finish off the night, we arrive in Westminster and take a look at their mall, which seems to have taken a turn for the worse in recent times. With an exodus of inline tenants, the end seems to be coming for this mall. Let's step inside and see what the Westminster Town Mall is all about. Originally under the name Cranberry Mall, Westminster Town Mall opened relatively late in the mall boom in 1987 under the Shopco Advisory Group, whom is also responsible for Frederick Town Mall and the Valley Mall in Hagerstown. The original anchors at the mall were Leggett, Montgomery Ward, Sears, and a rare Caldor. The Sears parcel was intended to be a Hutzler's, but the chain went bankrupt before they could set up shop. Montgomery Ward, meanwhile, came later to the mall around 1990. The anchors would have a manner of playing musical chairs over the years. Caldor today is completely unrecognizable, as the store closed in 1999 and became home to the first Stephen Barry's store in Maryland. When Stephen Barry's went under due to poor business decisions, the space would be subletted in 2010 between Dick's Sporting Goods, Gold's Gym, in a children's playground currently referred to as the Fun and Fit Factory. Montgomery Ward, meanwhile, would only see one change when the store closed in 2001, becoming home to the wonderful, wonderful Boscovs. Meanwhile, Leggett would merger with Belk, making this the only current mall to have both Belk and Boscovs coexisting in the same mall as of the making of this video. Over the 2000s, the mall would experience cosmetic updates, which would remove a conversation pit present in the center court. Oddly enough, the fountain, as we're about to see, remains intact. In addition, the exterior was updated to see some wild and wacky Mills-like architecture that is no longer present. This likely included the name change from Cranberry to Westminster Town Mall. Two thousand fifteen would see the first exodus of tenants, which included the loss of Schenken Title, Dress Barn, Deb, KFC, Radio Shack, and Bonworth. Later in two thousand seventeen, Gold's Gym would close amid lease disagreements, becoming home to a much more generic the Gym the same year. Also that same year, the mall would change ownership to a localized venture referred to as Westminster Mall LLC with Woodmont listed as the management. In October 2018, the mall would be dealt a serious blow with Sears slated to close, hosting its last day on January 6, 2019, just a week or so before I arrived. In addition, Westminster would suffer another exodus of tenants, causing the mall's occupancy to dwindle further. The future remains uncertain for Westminster Town Mall, but I can say with certainty that mass retail is not the future, with Belk and Boscovs fulfilling that purpose. Town Mall is definitely an odd mall. It is dark on the inside, but it still hosts a great deal of charm, with a unique ceiling, ramps that take you up and down the hillside, and that fountain, which was a genuine surprise for me. I had remembered Sal's video on the mall, and for whatever reason, I forgot all about that fountain. It particularly surprises me that they removed the conversation pit, but left the fountain. This is also the only Sears that I know of that has two mall entrances arranged like this. I spent a good hour or two at this mall waiting for the others to show up as I arrived ahead of schedule. The people I intended to meet here were the Neon Explorer, 
Anthony and Paula of Faded Commerce, Pat and Heather of Roll and Reel Retail, and the man himself, Sal of the Expedition Log series. I didn't really get anything in the way of footage with them as I got caught up in the moment of meeting people that I would gladly call friends, but we do at least have some pictures of the meetup courtesy of Faded Commerce. It was supposed to be a good moment for all of us, and while yes it certainly was, I was unfortunately plagued with the curse of Auntie Annie's from Lake Forest Mall. At one point the illness was getting so bad that I had to bail on everybody early. I do feel pretty bad having to leave them like that, but frankly, what can you do in that situation? Hopefully though, by the time this video goes up, the next meetup goes well. Anyway, enough with the personal issues, let's focus on the mall. You may have noticed as we're walking through, you can see a number of stores on their way out. Chances are, a number of stores that you see now may very well be gone by the time this video goes up. Payless Shoe Source is done, that Chick-fil-A we saw earlier is done, who knows what else will leave. It is pretty clear that retail is just about done at this mall, and Woodmont will have to look elsewhere for tenants. On one hand, after school activities like that Taekwondo place we saw earlier could come in. On another, office spaces could come in and occupy the mall. If Woodmont was really up for it, they could move towards entertainment venues. I don't want to see this mall die out, I just want to see it turn things around, at the very least. Now, this mall was another one of the Neon Explorer's stomping grounds. If you have any questions about this mall that I either didn't or cannot answer, then the Neon Explorer is probably who you should consult about that. In fact, I need to link some channels. Check the comments below for some links to her page. She is also present on the Dead Mall's Discord. Be nice though, she is a moderator there. Here by Dick's Sporting Goods is the movie theater, and what appears to be an impromptu food court with stalls gathered around the theater. It is a pretty common sight at malls. Movie theaters could be another way to keep malls on their feet, as they can draw potential patrons into the mall, and patrons could either get lunch while waiting for their movie, or go have dinner after their movie. And since the movies industry is still going, movie theaters would be a great tenant for malls. Now we begin the walk back towards Belk. All in all, it's a shame to see this mall going into freefall. Woodmont is at the helm of this mall, so I am hoping they can figure something out. They have fixed Marley Station. They are doing something with the gallery at Military Circle, which we will see in the future. I'm hoping they can do something with this mall. The only failure I know of that even Woodmont couldn't save was the St. Louis Mills. But this mall is much smaller than that. This should be a walk in the park for Woodmont. I normally try not to talk much about this, but all the families taking their kids out to this mall. What are the kids going to think about this place when they grow up? Will they think about it at all? There are musings that Generation Z will save them all. Whether that's true or not, We'll just have to wait and see. Yo dog, I heard you like Boskovs and Belk, so we put both Belk and Boskovs into the same mall so you can Belk while you Boskov. Well guys, we're just about winding down here, so it's time that I leave the others behind before I get any worse. But to lighten the mood and draw attention away from my sickening state, by the time this video goes up, I should be somewhere far, far away from home 
seeing dead malls of many shapes and sizes, along with some familiar faces and new ones. But back to this video. I do hope you enjoyed the tour of Westminster Town Mall. If you did, drop a like and comment about it, and if you didn't like it, then dislike but still comment about it. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of thing. After all, you want to know where I'm going, right? Subscribe and ring the bell for more notifications. Additionally, if you want to talk to me, Sal, Faded Commerce, The Neon Explorer, Raw and Real Retail, or others about the Westminster Town Mall, then do come join us on the Dead Malls Discord, where you can indeed talk to all of us and many more about Dead Malls, retail, urban exploration, and more. Just answer a couple questions with the moderators and you'll be good to go. Well guys, until next time, this is Doomy Grunt, wishing you and the Westminster Town Mall farewell and good luck. Two thousand fifteen would see the first exodus of tenants, which included the loss of Shankentile. Got the.